Hello everyone and welcome to Saturday Night Music Club. We are filming back once again at the Record Room Record Store in downtown Scottsdale, Arizona. Once again, a big thank you to John Rose, the proprietor of the Record Room. And we're out here filming out on the back patio. It's a beautiful evening here in Scottsdale, a nice 61 degrees. I'm Brett. I'm Jay Pop. Brent. Jonathan. Charles! <laughs> All right, so we're going with a one record theme tonight. And we called this Five Degrees of Separation. It started off as Six Degrees, but then Robert had to uh, leave town. So, uh, with that being said, I chose the first record, and then the next person had to find something in common with that record, a, a connection to that record. So, each person, when it gets their turn, they're going to explain how their record was connected to the previous one. So, I'm going to start things off with the record that I chose to start everything with. Uh, this is a record I featured on my Friday on the Turntable series. This is Roland S. Howard's Pop Crimes. Uh, he was a member of the band The Boys Next Door, which became The Birthday Party, an Australian group. And uh, this album came out in 2009, and he sadly passed away a couple months afterwards. So, uh, Jesse, what did you think? Um, I liked it. It had um, kind of simply sick bass lines, a lot of tambourines, slow tempo, mm -hmm. lots of tremolos and reverb. So. Those are all things that, to me, make music that I like. Those are all the effects. All right, what was your score? I gave it a three. Yeah, as always, we score things one to, one to a three, three being totally loved it, two being, yeah, I liked it, one, I didn't like it. Yeah, Brent. All right, so I thought this record got real heavy throughout uh, the side we listened to. Also had great tones. It was clear. It was really well done. Uh, I gave it a three. Jonathan, what do you think of Rolling S. Howard I, Pop Crimes? I enjoy this quite a bit. I'm actually going to purchase this in the near future. So, uh, but I, I liked it a lot. Actually, there's a the second track on the record called Shot Me Down. It's excellent. Oh, it's my favorite. It has some like Lee Hazelwood and Twin Peaks type vibe going on. It is great. I give it a three. Excellent. James? Um, I, uh, I liked it. It was all right. Um, I gave, I liked track two. Like he was saying, it sounded like Twin Peaks. Track three kind of had a less playful vibe in the bass line, um, but three and four kind of got into a repetitive kind of dribble sounding, and so I gave it a one. I did happen to purchase the album though, so I'm going to listen to it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, track more. three was a cover of Life's yeah, What You Make Talk. It by Talk Talk off of their Color of Spring album. Okay, so my record scored a 2.5. That'll take us to uh, Dream Pop Jesse's record, and uh, watch. Why don't you show what you brought? I brought, <coughs> excuse me, I brought PJ Harvey to bring you my love. How did uh, it connect to Roland S. Howard? This features Mick Harvey, no relation to PJ Harvey, but he played um, guitar on this album, on some of the tracks, and he was a guitar player for um, Birthday Party. And, and he also played on, and so. on yeah. that album, yeah. Yeah, great connection. Brent. You know, Brett, I just want to say that my favorite song was Come On Billy. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, it had some crayony tendons. I mean, instrumentation to it. Would you agree? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because of that, I mean, I gave it a three. I've been wanting some PJ Harvey in my life, so I liked it. Yeah. I, I really liked the, the bass work on the vocal work, on, on especially on a track called uh, Working for the Man was awesome. And it goes into, like, experimental with those, especially the folklore. I gave it a three. It's good. James. I too liked it. Um, Jesse and I were actually talking about PJ Harvey's albums, and uh, I, I think we might have both thought that, was this one your favorite? I can't mm -hmm. remember. Uh, this one wasn't my favorite at first, but um, I do love this album, and uh, yeah. I gave it a three. Sorry. Um, I gave it a two. It's intense, it's heartfelt, I think there's some intriguing dynamic instrumentation, uh, but, I, but I gave it a 2. Uh, Jesse, your score ended up being a 2.75. Good job. Alright, Brent, you're up next. Alright, I brought New Order Movement. Uh, the connection between this PJ Harvey and this record is Flood uh, assisted um, a lot of the, I think, the engineering and uh, 
producing on this. It was I think this was his where he got a lot of like his main start was this record, and I believe he was the main producer on this record. So, Can you say something? I was actually going to say is uh, an interesting tidbit of here locally in Arizona. I believe uh, at the one studio by Bob Pogue, he actually has the old soundboard that was used for the recording of this album. Oh, the flying flying blanket studio. Yeah. Sorry, I just thought of that as we right. were speaking. Good tidbit. Tid good tidbit. <laughs> he didn't mean to lunch cut you. <laughs> you, John, what did you think? Yeah, I thought it was awesome. It had some nice moody textures on that. I, I gave it a three. It's cool. I like it. I gave it a three. I uh, I, I could groundhog on it all day. So. I totally thought you were going to groundhog this record. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I it was so it. funny because when you pulled that out, Jonathan was like at the grip sweats. <laughs> so <laughs> much. Totally I thought he was going to grab this yeah. off my hand. You got all Megan Treonia. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, New Order Movement. Um, it's all about that base. Just yesterday on my Friday on the turntable, I did a ranking of the entire New Order <laughs> catalog. Uh, Movement is their, their debut album, so it really shows just, it has that, uh, as I mentioned that video, it still has elements where it sounds like Joy Division, but then it, it has those electronic elements that shows you what New Order was to become. Uh, the track, The Hymn, because uh, Brent played a side two, uh, just a great song. I gave it a three. Um, I really enjoyed this record. I also own it. Um, I really enjoy this record. It has all the, the real cool kind of hooky bass lines, which I feel have influenced a great many bands that I enjoy of the current bands that I listen to. So I give it a three. Nice. Definitely. I love it. Brent, once again, that was a perfect three. Good work. Well, thank you, James. For not groundhogging me. Yeah. No, I grab my all the time. Chicken. I don't know, is it good? Chicken, Chicken. Chicken. Um, So, uh, Jonathan, connect uh, connect your record. All right, so I brought uh, a record from a band called The Dukes of the Stratosphere, aka Ecstasy, and this record is called 25 O'Clock, and it's like a 80s neo-psychedelic type of record, and the uh, connection that has this new order record is uh, John Leckie, who's the producer on this record, was actually the engineer on that new order record. So that was the connection. Did you do the Stone Roses? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah so I thought, he's done a lot of stuff last year. <coughs> yes. Alright, uh, James, what do you think? Juice Stresser. I, uh, I didn't like it. I'm a really big ecstasy fan. Like, I, I trip every single oh, bet you are. weekend. No. <laughs> um, I, it's actually funny because three of the albums, well, I mean, ecstasy, if we were to say this was ecstasy, are really ingrained in my youth. I talk about my youth a lot, I guess, but um, but when I was younger too, Ecstasy was a band that me and one of my good friends at that time used to steal from his older brother's uh, collection a lot. I never knew this existed, and I'm kind of happy because I would have been pretty sad if I ever bought it and <laughs> like. <laughs> uh, so, but I also don't like that type of music either. That the. I'd call it, um, I don't know what I, I, I like to think of as bad words. So, uh, so I gave it a one. Okay. Um, <laughs> I thought, you know, it was like. You like to party? <laughs> no, not really. Did you see me partying? I'm just saying he wasn't getting grip sweats over <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. No, Fair I mean, enough. it was, it didn't do anything for me. Fair enough. No grip sweats. All right. I, it, to me, it was like a cross between Sgt. Pepper's <laughs> Beatles Cross with the zombies, cross yeah. with Morricone, cross with Crayoni, Megan Trayoni. <laughs> Overall, it was stressful trendful. to me. I gave it a one. Yes. See? Whoa. What? It does. Jesse. It sucks. Why are you gonna hate? <laughs> um, I thought it was good, but I don't see it being something like a casual listen. I don't think I'd be able to just pull it out. Yeah, see, that's what I mean by stress. Well, I don't even... It is stressful. It I don't even kind of feel like... I gave it a two like because, it. like I said... Yeah. Yeah. The one thing that I, I would have to say, though, and I, I want to see if you guys agree with me, is, is not to say that Ecstasy ever made any like completely serious music, but they had some music that... I don't know if it would necessarily... I just don't feel like it's... it's they're seriously trying to make this type of music. Like, I feel like it's a joke. Whoa. So, okay. uh, who else was going, Brent? You know, Jonathan, 
least none of them was honey dick in you. <laughs> so it's I, I can mean it. I do mean it. Like yeah. it's nice to get an honest opinion. Uh yes. so my opinion is this is typical you. It's psychedelic like your drug of choice. It's you. Yeah. So that's it's good. Word, yeah. I, you know, and I and I like psychedelic stuff. It's a good so cover. Look at that cover. I like the yeah. cover. Oh, I like the I actually, when I started listening to it, I was like, oh, man, I didn't even realize, because he bought this here, I didn't realize we had that. So I'm going to be on the lookout for it. So I gave it a three. Uh, Jonathan, <laughs> you ended up scoring a 1.75. Woo! That takes us to JC. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Harsh. Revenge Brady. Finally joined the club. Why so, the I would have never guessed James would have liked that, right? I mean, that was the yeah. No. So this is a, what would you call it? Pseudonym? For? Psycho no. Psychedelic? It's a side project. It's a side, side project, project of XTC. Yeah. Uh, Dave Gregory plays guitar in XTC and this crap. Uh -oh. Oh. That's, see, that's just disrespectful. I know, to the artist and to Jonathan. Yeah. Oh, that, that's Sorry. an apology. I take back everything. And to the viewers. Wow. Negative inside my life. Um, so, he also played on uh, I Don't Remember and Family Snapshot on Peter Gabriel's Peter Gabriel album, which is number three, also known as Melt. I give it a one. Okay. <laughs> okay. Cool. <laughs> he's, like, he's like Ani Badger in his own <laughs> record. Kidding. Um, I actually so, so, so the things I didn't like about it, which I think are going to be echoed in several people just because of all the chatter this record drummed up. Uh, the soprano sax, the smooth jazz like sax, same sax. 50. Two seconds. Well, it was on there and it affected me, and then I'm going to talk about it. That's what I heard the most. Um, yeah. That I did. But out. you know what I really that liked was the song good. Family Snapshot, because yeah. that starts off with that piano, and that reminded me of Peter Gabriel Genesis, and I liked it. Because of that, and I have this record, but um, I, you know, I, I, I give it a two. Jesse. Um, I'll just say that I enjoyed the first song. Intruder. Intruder. Right. But the rest of the record made me feel like I was living in a three-story apartment complex. One where my neighbor upstairs was playing Genesis, and one where my mom was downstairs <laughs> playing Kenny G. <laughs> <laughs> and you were listening to Psychedelic Dream Pop. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. <laughs> It was a sound war. It did sound. That's a, it's conflicting it, with itself. Yeah. That should be the new, like, when that's reissued, that should be, that should be a, the, the, the promo sticker on that. The hype sticker? The hype sticker. I give yeah. it to you, because I was being nice. No, what's this nice stuff? You and I was great. He's a nice guy. Okay. We're a nice guy. He can't be mean. There's a mean bone in his body. Well, I mean, I mean yeah, it doesn't he's have not to trying, be mean. He's not trying to honey. Of people. Good. <laughs> okay. Uh, Brent. Uh, I, you know, I'm right there with the mom upstairs, and I call this a safe sex record <laughs> because you play this, you're not getting any. <laughs> uh, the 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 really bad smooth jazz piece of it with the '80s radio rock mixed in is like. I die a little bit inside when I hear stuff like that, so I gave it a one. Sorry, Jonathan. Yeah, I I gave it a two, but I, I like I like some songs on this record, like Intruders, Awesome. It's like has some pretty industrial type of sound and game with games without frontiers. It's cool. But then you get into Family Snapshot, and it's just like some pre Kenny G clear channel two for Tuesday nonsense. It's, 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 it's <laughs> like, didn't have any of that. I mean, like, <laughs> these guys aren't even totally listening. And then, 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 then it gets, there's no other radio <laughs> rock about that album. And then, and then through the wire, through the wire, and then it has that horrible sax return that returns, and then that tepid keyboards is, is horrible. Oh, man, you're getting, you're getting naughty bad. It's bad. You're getting more you're, you're 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 marine like Red so, Dawn he's, style. He gave it a two, which is scored higher than what I gave his record. No, see, oh, okay, wait. Th there's some revenge grade in here? No. I'm yeah. just saying. Yeah. I just tell the truth. He gave me a one. Tell the truth. What else is going on? I just, I just looked at it. 
James and Brett get hostile. One revenge grade on my record, but he like, bought it. He's like looking at all their scores. I bought it to give it a chance. Yeah. All right. Uh, no, I scored your thing. Because yours played even before I. Okay. So uh, James, you and Jonathan tied with a 1.75. So now you guys can talk about. It. All right. So. Yeah. Ow. Uh, the scores on this one. Uh, Last place, Jonathan and James with a 1.75. Right. Uh, Come on, point, the I ended up getting a 2.5 on Roland S. Howard. Been James, three. James gave it a one, which was which should've was three. which was a revenge grade. I think I we all agree on that. Should have been a three. Yeah. I would say yeah. at least yeah. three. Yeah. It was a revenge should've grade. Should have been three. Yeah. 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 That that wasn't that wasn't cool. Because <laughs> I try to give an honest grade no matter what, no I matter who gives an honest it. Grade. That was an honest grade. Jesse, 2.75, and Brent, you got 3.0 on that one. Guys, uh, thanks for watching this episode of Saturday Night Music Club. Once again, thank you to the record room. <laughs> James is leaving. Although his stuff is all over here, so it's all for TV. It's making good TV right now. <laughs> Taking his bat and ball and going home. <laughs> <laughs> you like share? <laughs> My mom wants her Kenny G records back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Boss Gang. Yeah. You can take yeah, your uh, Laloon record back with you, too. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you guys next month. Yeah. Yeah.